remembrance of the uh, place, you know, a lot of portraits, I guess, and a lot of masterpieces. How is that to be working here in Rembrandt's house? He's not in right now. <laughs> That's quite true. So, being in this spot doesn't have any uh, particular effect on you. Uh, no, they, uh, yeah, they, the building looks like new, so uh, it doesn't look like he's still around. I mean, you can uh, maybe you need some kind of. Uh, medium to get him uh, back, I don't know, <laughs> get his ghost back. <laughs> yeah, they expelled him for lack of money. Yeah, so he's not, he didn't die here also, so I guess, uh, yeah, his spirit is not around, I don't know. So, I noticed when I was here yesterday that you do a lot of portraits. Um, when you're doing a portrait, what is it that you're looking for um, in that, uh, in in a face, or is there is there a way that you come to the portrait itself? No, you, what, what you're looking for in a portrait is uh, you're looking for yourself, uh, actually. And um, yeah, it's like a mirror. Every face is like a mirror. It's, uh, every interview is like a mirror of yourself. <coughs> and it's the same uh, with uh, portraits. And that's also what uh, is intriguing about it, because uh, yeah, every time uh, it's kind of a mixture between you, the world, and the other person. So, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Now, here you've been making a lot of portraits. Yeah. Um, when you paint in your own studio and you're working there, do you work basically the same way, very fast, uh, very... Um, you develop it very quite quickly, the personality of the person I watched yesterday. Yeah, I like to do it uh, as quick as possible. I don't know why, but <laughs> I think to capture uh, yeah, the moment, you have to do it uh, quickly. And uh, yeah, I think also um, <clears throat> it's very difficult to concentrate uh, for more than uh, one hour. So I'm like kind of a Zen painter. I want to do it uh, yeah, at that time. You know, you, maybe you can study for a hundred years to make than that one painting in five minutes. Five minutes, so that's what I like to do. Now, Rembrandt was very famous for his portraits, and uh, oftentimes it was said that he was able to create emotion or mm -hmm. to show the emotional state of that person when, when he was making either the portrait. Is that something, one of your concerns in portraits? No, I don't think uh, it comes or it don't uh, or it doesn't come because uh, you, you it costs um, yeah a lot of trouble already to make a painting and if you think about the psychology of the person if you want to capture that it's very difficult i think uh, it comes there by itself through your eyes and then yeah your arm your brush the paint and then suddenly, on the canvas, there's the emotion and the psychology without you even thinking about uh, how you're going to do it, you know, it's, it comes there. You cannot say, now today I'm going to make a, a portrait uh, very, with very interesting uh, psychology. Uh, yeah. It's paint and that's what it always will be, but you can fantasize about uh, who, who it is. And, uh, what he's taught, is he a serial killer, is he a pedophile, <laughs> or is he a very good holy man, or, you know, these things all come together in the painting, but you cannot say that in advance. Now today you're working on a nude drawing, and yeah. I think later you're going to paint this afternoon. This is part of your, uh, part of what you do as a specialty, I think. Um, is there something the female nude has been a classic throughout the ages. Is there a particular reason this is, other than male painters? <clears throat> no, it can be very sexy, but uh, yeah, it's also uh, yeah, the human form changes every time. If you look at uh, a plant, a, f a, tr a flower or a tree, you know, it's, it don't move. Most trees don't walk around. 
and uh, the human body, uh, the human form, it, it walks around. In the morning, you you sleeping with a nice girl. She gets up. You know this moment can be so beautiful. She opens the windows. Then you think God is there. You know. And uh, you want to uh, be a little bit like God, so you uh, create uh, Eve again. And uh, yeah, that's what I see in every girl. I see uh, the creation of uh, yeah, human beings. And uh, that's what you are. Uh, you're, you're, you're an instrument of God in that way, and that's nice. Now today, the the model is uh, assuming a lot of different poses, and I notice that you're working very fast. Uh, is this uh, part of your style also with your nudes? Uh, you work quickly, and uh, or what? Yeah, I like to uh, uh, be them themselves. You know, just uh, this girl is a dancer, for instance, and I asked her to. Uh, yeah, we played some uh, music, and uh, she was just dancing uh, with it. I think it's much more nice than uh, you ask her to do to make poses, because if you ask them to do that, you get uh, the yeah the classical poses, the, the poses, which are so obvious. It's more interesting to do to make someone do the dishes, for instance. Then you get more uh, interesting poses, and also part of the Dutch tradition. If you look at Vermeer or Rembrandt, for instance. You see very simple uh, things like a girl reading a letter or pouring milk or things like that, which are not so obvious to do, but uh, are quite natural and uh, yeah, it has a kind of intimacy, which is more interesting than the classical poses, uh, which create more distance, I think. Now, art and painting in particular have undergone a lot of changes in the 20th century. Uh, how do you see the role of painting and the painter uh, here in the new 21st century? Now, I think uh, we as human beings uh, don't change uh, so much. If you look at um, the cave paintings or you look at uh, children paintings or paintings of Rembrandt, uh, the differences are not so uh, big. It's, um, it, it will always uh, exist, I think, painting because it's a very direct uh, way of create uh, some, of create something. If you're in the middle of the desert in Africa, you can still make a painting, but it's much more difficult to make a computer work, for instance. And uh, I think that's also the big, big attraction of uh, painting and drawing, that uh, you can do it with such simple things. You don't need any money for it. You don't, uh, if you have a finger, and a piece of beach, you can make a drawing, you know, and uh, that is the big attraction of it. And it's, yeah, it's very direct link between your brain and your eyes and, uh, yeah, the, the, the thing you, the thing you uh, do. Now, speaking of Africa, I understand that you were in Africa painting not long ago. Uh, different down there? No, what I was looking for was, was the, the source of, uh, of painting because the spirituality of uh, painting and drawing here and sculpture is, uh, yeah, we don't really know why we do it. Sometimes we only do it to, to fill up a museum or a gallery uh, to sell these things. In Africa, art still has kind of a spiritual role um, in their uh, beliefs in gods and um, spirits, a yeah, kind of religious uh, thing. So it has uh, a use to make a drawing or a sculpture. It has a direct um, meaning. And here the direct meaning is mostly uh, yeah, to make, to become famous artists or something like that. And I didn't want to, uh, I'm not so interested in that. So that's why I went to Africa to look for the source, why we're doing it. And it's, yeah, you can find it in New York maybe, but uh, Africa has uh, some direct uh, meaning of, um, yeah, how and why to make art. Well, speaking of the how and why, what brought you to making art in the first place? Yeah, I think like every child, you, uh, you look at your big toe and you wonder why is it there? And um, yeah, you get a piece of paper. Some you, I think everybody is creative uh, in some sort of way. And uh, yeah, it stops after a while because people uh, they think they have to uh, be like Rembrandt, for instance. 
And if they're not like Rembrandt, they cannot make art anymore. And that's that's also uh, what you look if you see more primitive societies, which uh, kindergarten is also a kind of primitive society. And then people don't have trouble with that because it's about uh, the meaning behind it and not uh, the result. It's the experience which uh, counts uh, very much. And in uh, my vision, uh, the experience uh, can be more important sometimes than the result because it's the experience uh, in what we live by. That's the, the reason for us to live. If you sell a second-hand car, it's also the experience of selling this car is, can be more nice than the result than making this money, which is also uh, maybe uh, interesting, but uh, it's the experience which counts, I think, in life. After Rembrandt House, uh, what's next for you, Peter? Uh, yes, back to the, the Peter House, to the Peter Klaas House again. And, uh, yeah, I will continue uh, what I've done here also to make uh, the portraits, the nudes, and uh, yeah, continue with uh, with uh, and look for new experiences. And uh, because every time you make a painting, I'm always surprised at the results. You know, it can be so bad sometimes, <laughs> which can also be very nice. You know. Peter, thank you very much for being with us today. Okay, thank you. And, uh, we welcome to look at uh, the works. Thank you.